G'day and welcome what was that? to the pod pod. I think it's a longer build up this one, the Tigers one. Hang on, let's hear it. Gotta hear the drop. There it is. Hey! There it is. Alright, there we go. We are doing the Tigers team preview on the pod pod today. And always, thanks to Checkers, he, he let us use his uh, theme songs that he made a few years back. So shout out to Checkers from Marmalade, making those absolute bangers of the team theme songs there. The Freo uh, one kills it. Yeah, the Freo one was good. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to improve the Richmond song, right? I think it was just a build-up. I reckon the ending, yeah. you know, really comes through as well for Checkers there. But no, we're yeah. loving these theme songs. Had a lot of comments of, come through about them. A bit of PTSD there for me, Dossie, because he made all those songs in my living room. So oh, wow. <laughs> I, I could I could hear it all from from my bedroom at the time and uh, oh wow yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> once is okay yeah hearing those on repeat might have been a tough slog for you there Louis uh, we are talking Richmond Tigers of course and uh, as we have in all the team previews I'm going to go through the team numbers to start then we're going to get into some players to talk about I do have State O five time top one hundred finisher here Harmy two time top ten finisher and Louis regular. In the triple figures in fantasy, you've also got Dossie here. Uh, I think I was 20K last year, something like that. Uh, we'll get into the team numbers. <laughs> 13th on the ladder last year were Richmond. 14th for AFL fantasy scoring. They were third last in the comp for center clearances and marks. So clear weaknesses in the team there. Um, below average for kicks, handballs, disposals, just kind of that sort of middle middle tier team but what they did very well was just bang it long onto the boot so second for total meters gained uh leading them to have the third most inside 50s last year they just couldn't finish their work so obviously there's a big change in the offseason coach adam Uze at the helm and what we've heard so far is that there's gonna be an offense heavy game plan stato is this exciting for fantasy coaches or is offense heavy? Does that mean more of the same and, you know, not too exciting on the fantasy front? Well, you just talked about that they were inside 50 the third most time. That's offensive. Um, so we're going to see pretty similar style by the sound of it. That's that's the way it reads to me. I don't know. I've, I've heard, you know, players coming out saying this is the most, you know, offensive just constant stuff we want to see. I really am keen to see what the next thing is. We, we've had enough of the, the the dimmer clones out there now. I'm really keen for like some other game plan to break through, and I'm hoping it's Uze. I'd be interested to see what this game plan ends up being. But honestly, I think this is probably out of the new coaches. Obviously, we've already seen dimmer before. This is the one where I'm quite interested to see where he goes um, in this season and, and takes the Tigers, uh, what direction he takes the Tigers. Let's look at their trade period. And what changes they made aside from Uze, just Justin Kaczynski, uh, really, coming in from the Hawks. And uh, their outs, they lost Ivan Soldo and a guy who I struggle pronouncing his name. Really going to have to look this up after we've done these shows. But Bigao Nuon also heading out. Hopefully I nailed that one there. Um, Stato, going back to you again, mate. The buy round, discuss the buy round for the Tigers. Unfortunately, they do play that opening round. Uh, and they've got their first buy in round six. So there is a little bit of a buffer there, though, from you know their opening round to round six. What yeah, a little bit less that? concerned with the clubs that have the round five and six buy round because the money makers you're going to get from them, you can actually move on. Um, between those clubs, um, and, and let's talk about Richmond just individually, there's not too many players that you're thinking top of line. You've probably got Short. You've probably got Martin with a, a thin forward line. Um, and you've got an absolute outside chance of, of Nank um, without Soldo being up there in the, the scoring too. But he's so highly priced compared to your ruck bargains, you're probably not touching him. So your, um, your actual Richmond targets are... 
low end mid prices and rookies. That's where you're spending your coin here, uh, unless you're going Timmy T. Okay, uh, we're going to touch on him in a minute, but let's look at the popular picks for fantasy coaches. One player, just one, over ten percent owned for the Tigers, which is extraordinary scenes. Um, I don't know if they've got that. Well, they usually get their auto filled teams as well, so we get high ownership from the Richmond and Carlton players uh, early days, though, from all the the auto filled fantasy teams that didn't quite finish them off. So maybe we see a lot of ownership come in late. But look, Josh Gibkiss, um, defender, two hundred and fifty six thousand is thirteen percent owned at the moment. Coming off that year on the sidelines due to ongoing hamstring issues, Louis. He played pretty well in that rookie year, showed a lot of promising signs as a lockdown defender and coming in rookie price, 256K, um, as Stato said, could we back in someone? Because his buyer's not till round six. We're probably going to get our cash by then. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to be a massive scorer. So I'm not sure you want him on field, but something that he will have, I presume, will be job security. So this guy he had major hamstring issues and... Uh, he was sent off overseas to get that looked at, went through a massive program. I think that in of itself sort of indicates that Richmond really rate this guy. They want this guy to get to his best football. Uh, so that's why I see him playing a lot of football this season. Uh, 256K, you have to pay a little bit more than the, than the basement price. But uh, I think this guy will be a really popular pick uh, on the benches of a lot of coaches' teams, especially given that he'll be playing nice and early uh, in the week. Let's look at the top averaging players from last year as well. And uh, Stato, you mentioned him off the top, but I'm going to throw to Harmy. It is Timmy T, 112 average last year, 1.02 million starting price. He was the best player for Richmond though last year, and he actually started way better than that as well. Could you see him being actually some value despite the 112 price tag? Not value, no. I couldn't see that, Dossie. Um, but, you know, it was, it's only because of what happened in the second half of the year and I guess you the coaching stuff a little bit up in the air may have affected him or there may have possibly been some sort of injury because he really dropped away after that hot start. Hopper came back in as well, a bit more competition. But, look, I couldn't, I couldn't start him, mate, to be fair. Any other thoughts? I mean, Timmy T... Such a popular pick last year. Could be, you know, he's got everything going for him for a fantasy game. Always looked like he should have, you know, been doing this sort of 112 average when he was at GWS. Just way too many mouths to feed. There's not those mouths at Richmond now, Stato. So can he just go 112 again or even push it higher? Of course he can go 112 again. But the two points I'll make here is his last five, he went 87. So if you're paying $1.02 million for someone that's going to give you high 80s, low 90s, that's a real concern. So um, at the end of the day, if he starts the first three, four uh, or five rounds um, as a really good player, he's not going to cost you too much more to pick him up after his first buy when you know the form and role is there. So... The, the reality, anyone over a million dollars, you want to lock away without any question marks. Yes, any player can get injured at any time. We just accept that that's a challenge of our game. Some are under more risk than others, of course. Um, so there's always that threat, but there's a little bit of a question mark on um, his role, and I will say how good of a score he is when Hopper is in because that is a question mark. Yeah, I think he's going to be one of the players in this team that's closely tied to the game style under this new coach just because uh, in terms of his ball disposal, it's not very high. He's a bit of a hack in that respect, but clearance beast, of course. Uh, what he is, though, is really capable forward when he does spend a time yeah. up there. So that 112, I agree, it looks a little bit difficult to improve on, but uh, we know what he's capable of. And uh, maybe that first half of the season is more reflective of what he can do. So if you want to look at it from that perspective, then yeah, he did have a down second half of the year, but if he can put it all together uh, and things go his way in 2024, then all of a sudden this guy might jump up to 118 average. 
Looking at the second highest averaging player from last year, Toby Nankervis at 102. The big man getting it done, 923K. Look, I'm not even going to throw to the group here. I know we're going to get shot down. The rucks, the ruck line is just, look, we've got way too much value. I think we've said it before. If you want to back yourself in and pick Toby Nankervis to be the number one ruck, though, go ahead and do it. Like that's If that's your what you want to do, nothing's stopping you. We don't ever hold anything against unique picks like that. So... Go ahead and do it. If he's your man, um, go with the Nank. Third highest averaging player last year was Jaden Short. And coming under is probably what you'd imagine Jaden Short could average. Um, up at 92.5 for his average last year. So 835K, Stato, for me, seems a little low for uh, for Jaden Short. Yeah, look, he, he looks value, but the question mark is... Has he got that role again? And is it the game style that's that's going to have that quarterback role? So there's a few question marks. So we, we've got um, we've got the opening round to have a bit of a look to see what they've done, and that's the benefit of a couple of these clubs that we're a little bit unsure of what the new coach is going to bring. Them playing opening round does help us. What would your a question we're getting quite a lot is what would your line be for a player like that? So what score would they have to get in opening round for you to want to start with them? I, I think I said it before. It's actually the break even. So that's what it boils down for me. Is oh this he's he scores one hundred and eighty and has a break even of negative forty two. So we know he's he's going to go up fifty grand. I can't afford that, and it looks like he's got the prime role then I'm willing to take the punt. But we all know that negative break-evens generally come from the lower lower price, mid-prices and the rookies. All right, let's touch on all the other players that we want to talk about for Richmond. Dusty Harmy coming back into the fray, contract year on the books. And I think this year, what's he, our second highest averaging forward available to us behind mm. Jack McRae? Yeah, I can see people going early on him in a uh, draft, in a single-season draft, that's for sure, because of the lack of uh, available forwards. But, yeah, I think, man, is he is he the premium forward that we're chasing? Oh, I just don't think he is. I think that... Army, is yeah, it... Yeah, are we going to really see... Good... A, are we going to see a race between Dusty and Fife for the Brownlow this year? Is that what you're wondering? Vintage yeah, well, times. Well, well fife has got two Brownlow, so he's going yeah, to run on I mean. the book. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, yeah, I don't know. He, he, look, Dusty actually had a good season last year, um, and I just think something's going to change at the Tigers for them to make a bit of a push back up into the finals race and investing uh, in Dusty being their key midfielder. At, how old is he? About thirty-two. Oh, I'm not sure if that's really the way to go. Hey, Dossie, how many times did Dustin Martin average over 100? I know he averaged 113. I reckon it was in the premiership year, the first one. Um, did he go over 100 after that? Probably one, one other time, two other times? No, never after that. Never? So that was really? A, that was the last year, but he had oh. 100 averages two years prior. Okay. He is the one of two forwards, though, that had the highest floor last season, uh, courtesy of Keeper League Ks. I think his lowest score was a 66. So uh, coming in priced at 90, you're probably paying a, a fair price. Yeah. Uh, but you might be able to rest on your laurels that, okay, this guy's not going to burn me too much. All right. Well, I think I couldn't think of another player that would warrant, you know, the the offensive game style that, should be talked yeah, about more true. other than Shay Bolton as well. Uh, a mid forward, you'd think that he could slot into that midfield and be that pure guy in there this year. He's always kind of been the uh, the, the air too, Dusty, and the way he's played in there. Obviously a little bit smaller, a little bit more um, slight other than compared to Dusty, but still has that crisp way of kicking the ball, that great way of being able to pick it up. Um, who are we going to throw to for this one? Lou. What are your thoughts on Shea Bolton? As uh, I know, Jaden Papowski, the stats man, a uh, big fan of the, of Shea Bolton this year. Yeah, no, he's shown a bit for a couple of years now, and uh, that sort of high half forward role where they start and centre bounces and then link up towards the forwards has been quite fruitful in recent years for fantasy coaches. So 
Shia Bolton's probably one of the best at it. Um, I think he just needs a little bit more responsibility, though. So uh, whether that equates to more CBA usage, I'm not sure. I think he's still probably going to be that guy that starts in the CBA and then runs forward to provide that option, uh, which is probably puts him at about where he is. But more responsibility, I could comfortably see, you know, five to ten points upside there. Just uh, something on Shea Bolton. It's interesting that midfield mix, isn't it? Because he he's he would probably be a good one in there with just with his burst of pace. You got Taranto and Hopper, and if Prestia is in there as well, it's sort of like they're a bit same same speed. You know what I mean? So I'm not quite sure about that midfield mix yet. Yeah. So but who um, would the targets be up forward though? Oh, Tom Lynch. Like, oh, yeah, you mean there's a small forward? No, I mean, I mean that type of player. We're probably talking, I guess, like it maybe a, a Jack Graham, a Pickett if he plays, well, D- I guess. Well, Dan Rioli Baker, played maybe. there later in the year. Dan Rioli was back in that forward forward line, unfortunately for his own fantasy scoring though, mind you. Yeah, one of um, Rioli or Baker. Mm, uh, just speaking of Shea Bolton, so this is what Papowski said. Jaden Papowski, our man. Uh one of the best stoppage players after Dimmer uh, after Dimmer left was Shea Bolton. Better in both stoppage and transition points after Dimmer left. So yeah, to your point, Harmy as well. Just just that added sort of mixture in their uh, in their midfield. All right, let's talk about just a few more players here. Uh, Liam Baker with the defender forward status. Any interest for you, Stato? He's always showed promise if playing midfield. Bit of a He's got some Rory Laird traits about him, just the very mild Rory Laird traits. Um, I'm part of the 1.9% that own him. So, yes, when when we're weak um, in that forward line, um, not too many good selections. I'm looking for people with potential upside. We've seen what a ceiling he's actually got. Um, so I need to see the opening round of how well he plays that midfield role and, and what his midfield ceiling would be like. But I'm really keen, so he's sitting there at the moment. Okay, so sorry, what so what role are you expecting from Baker this year, though? Uh, it's all the talk is that he's going to be playing midfield. So oh, man, if he's that's juicy. If, yeah, if he's going to be doing that and he's available as a forward defender. Um, especially with our forward line so thin, I'm really interested. Priced at um, 69.8, I think it is. Um, so it, it's cheap enough to take that punt, but I get the opportunity of opening round to see what the evidence is. I want to talk about a guy. I actually got more keen just looking at the price of this guy. Now, I don't know where he's at injury-wise. You guys might have to, <laughs> you guys might have to fill me in here. But Tom Lynch, like... Key forwards were kind of back a bit last year and given our lack of forwards and seeing what a few key forwards, namely Tex, did last year, $563,000, only played four games, did Tom Lynch. So he's got a discount as well, I believe, or he would have had some sort of thing factored into his his price. If Tom Lynch is up and about, Harmy, you, you're giving me some body reactions there. If you're watching on the YouTube, he's giving me a little bit of body movement, a bit of a nod, dare I say. Uh, Tom Lynch, thoughts on him this year, potentially being a unique pickup forward? Yeah, I looked at him just because of the um, the price dossier, but key forward, I mean, really unlikely that he's going to pop and um, score you regularly uh, well. You know, it only takes 140 to um, plummet the, the, the price increase. So I'm not that keen. Save you 70000 and go for Nat Fife instead, mate. At, at the end of the day, he scored, he averaged uh, 76 in 2022. So his discount is applied to that rather than the 51.7. Yeah. So okay. if, if there was a discount on the 51.7, I'd be keen. Stato, are you keen the, the game before his buy? So round five, West Coast Eagles, bag of 10. <laughs> I might be streaming him in draft, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just think I was I got keen when I saw the inside 50 numbers being the third highest and you know new coach probably looking at doing the same sort of thing anyway okay let's look at some other players Thompson Dow had to get a Dow in there there's been some pl- people keen in our own little chat here about Thompson Dow Louis are you one of those people 
Um, oh, not particularly yet, mate, but he's at a nice price point where if we do keep hearing positive things about him, which we have, uh, a few different sources um, online that have been posting about how Thompson Dowell has really impressed uh, Adam Uze and the new coaching group. Uh, sounds like he might even have a midfield role. And as we've sort of gone over in this podcast, it does start to thin out quite quickly for that Richmond midfield. Uh, he's had a few years, years in the system now. He's a big body. Uh, yeah, if the Ducks line up for him, I could see him as a serious option this year. Comes in a discount, Dossie. He averaged 55 last year and he's priced at 45, so inbuilt value, the fantasy pricing system. Yeah, you've been the one chirping in the group chat army about some <laughs> no. Tommy Dow, I must say. I will say that the interest I have in Dow is actually picking him and him being success and it be the wrong Dow. <laughs> it's only look, it's only a million bucks to invest in two Dows. That's that's a bargain, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, all right. Well, we, looks like we've lost Harmy. You no, know, he's back. He's back. All right. Uh, so let's talk about just a few more players. I'll just throw around the room. Any interest in either Prestia, Hugo Rouse Smith? Jack Ross, there's just nodding heads here. Um, look, i got to say Hugo Ralph Smith for me, if I see him in the right role, I'm definitely interested. I didn't realize how cheap he was. If he, how cheap? Pretty cheap. If, if we see, I'll, I'll get his numbers up. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'll, if, I'll, I'll go and find him. Look, if we see someone, like you said, Dan Rioli moving forward, if we see that happen, if we see Short in the midfield, 38.9 average was Hugo Routh Smith last year. He's in at 351K. I think he's a better player than that. He must have been a sub a few times. So Hugo Routh Smith for me, just one to watch roll in the preseason. Uh, um, and then I'm just finding him now. So here we go. 351. So it's an awkward price to be honest. Yeah, I've already said it. Stato, it's fine, mate. You're a bit okay, late sorry, to the ball. <laughs> I was searching. All right, Should final name. Jacob Bauer has been Put in the run sheet by Louis. Yeah, I just chucked him in 200k forward. Got some games last year. Uh, I can just see him getting uh, regular games next year. So, yeah, keep him in mind. He's not going to be a massive scorer being a key forward, but just another option that we've got at 200k uh, because pretty much all the Richmond rookies were wiped out in round 24 last year. So, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> All right, well, that'll wrap it up for the Richmond podcast. Make sure you follow us at PodPodAFL on X, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Make sure you're following along or subscribe, depending on whichever platform you're listening to. We're going to be dropping some more team previews very soon, um, and we'll see you on the next uh, team preview podcast. Mm -hmm.